All right, today's video is about the ESP32 producing sinusoidal output. Uh, I was a bit frustrated with the Arduino in that its sinusoidal output is really a simulated output using PWM. And I wanted to see if we could actually produce a real sine, sine wave uh, from one of these microcontrollers. So I've written code with the um, for the ESP32. It might actually run on the Arduino, but I haven't tried it. Um, and it is currently running. Um, I've got uh, two wires coming out of the ESP32. Uh, GPIO 25, which is DAC channel 1 on that yellow wire, is going off to scope channel 1 on my electronics explorer board. And then the brown wire is just carrying the ground over to the same scope channel. All right, looking at the picture of the ESP32, there are the two DAC channels. They are 8-bit uh, DAC channels. That's just internally controlled, not configurable. And we are using DAC channel 1 in this case. That's a configurable setting of the software that I've written. And we're going to look at that software now. So, all right. We'll start with the uh, loop method. Um, nothing is happening within the loop method, interestingly. Um, the way that this works is it uses an internal timer within the ESP32, which has um, microsecond resolution, which is great. Um, and that... Um, we use a mechanism that uh, is a callback to another function, and that function is the one that gets the values of the sine wave at each point in time and spits it out to the DAC channel. So nothing happens within the loop, and we will, um, you know, we'll get into um, the functions that are actually doing the work. Here's the setup. We uh, set up the uh, serial output so we can write data to the uh, terminal, uh, print out some settings. That's what we're looking at down here. Um, it provides information about what what has been configured, um, what the desired frequency is, the sample sample rates per second or samples per second, excuse me, uh, and it calculates the samples per cycle based upon just dividing the first number into the second. It also spits out the clock speed, which is not configurable, but um, it was information I was curious about, so I wrote a method to grab that and included that in the output that uh, sent to the terminal. Same with the heap information I was curious about. The memory within ESP32, so there's a function in there that grabs that, and that's also included in this uh, printed output. Continuing, continuing with this setup method, um, there's a function to create a circular linked list, and that uh, circular linked list holds all the values for one complete cycle of the sine wave, um, and we hold that in a, the current node, basically the beginning node of the circular linked list. Um, then we populate the circular linked list with all the data for one complete cycle of the sine wave. Uh, we set up the uh, callback timer. That's an internal timer um, with the microsecond resolution. And then we tell the DAC output to be enabled in, uh, for a certain DAC channel, a configurable DAC channel. So continuing along here, here's the print settings method that uh, spits out this information down here at the bottom. Here is the function that sets up the callback timer. Um, okay, so the frequency of the callback timer is determined by the given number of samples per second. Um, so uh, that along with the frequency, it can do some calculations and determine the number of samples, uh, and the number of microseconds per sample, in other words. Um, there's a timer ID. Interestingly, the ESP32 has several timers, uh, so I'm just using the first one, which is timer ID 0. Apparently, you can count up and down, so I said count up to true. Uh, then I've created some variables here, so there's no magic numbers. Um, uh, basically, the resolution is microseconds, so that's what this is, uh, microseconds per second. And then the microseconds per sample is just the microseconds per second of the timer divided by the samples per second. Um, so that gives us microseconds per sample. And if we look at the waveform, this is actually running. Microseconds per sample is just the time for each one of these horizontal movements, right, to get to the next value, which is then spit out the DAC channel. So that's the microseconds per sample. Uh, continuing along here, you create the timer, give it the ID, tell it to count up. There's a timer divider here, and I don't really understand what it does. I haven't had any success at changing it and having the system still work, so I'm just leaving that value alone. Sorry, I don't have any more information about that. Uh, then you attach the timer to the interrupt, the interrupt being this on timer method that we'll take a look at in a second. Um, and then you just tell the timer to, you know, begin to write, which is basically the timer is going to send out a alert notice to the or, the, or basically telling the on-timer method to 
trigger every um, every number of microseconds per sample. Um, and then you enable the timer, so that gets the whole thing rolling. Here's the on-timer method. It's pretty simple. This function generates the output of the sine wave to the DAC channel. It's called periodically by the timer. The period depends on the samples per second. This function gets the value of the waveform from the circular link list, outputs the value to the DAC channel, and then advances the link list to the next node, or the next value, basically, of the sine wave. So here it is. Get the current node value, send it to the DAC output channel. Uh, here's the channel, and here's the waveform value, and then just advance the node in that uh, circular link list to the next one. Uh, this is a, this is the method that populates the uh, circular link list. It's called by that setup method early on, so the, the values are static once that's been set up and the link list has been established. Um, so basically, we just go through the number of samples per cycle. Once again, that's going to be a complete cycle, has so many steps, that's the number of samples. Um, and we just do that in a for loop, calculate the angle per, per step, get that in radians, do some calculations here uh, of the sine of the angle. Um, right here, and we add, or excuse me, multiply by the amplitude, and then we add the amplitude, which is kind of confusing. It confused me at first. But the reason for that is that the uh, sine wave output from uh, ESP32, or any of these microcontrollers, I suppose, uh, is not allowed to have negative values. And a sine wave, this sine is going to return positive and negative values. This multiplication is going to have positive and negative values. So adding the amplitude is basically shifting that uh, sine wave up so that everything is uh, at or above the x-axis. And then we multiply by an attenuation factor, which is um, a configurable um, member of this uh, of this code. I'll show, the, show you that later. Put that value into the uh, circular link list and advance to the next node and then continue in loop. That's how that works. Uh, let's see. This is just to create the circular link list. We have to allocate some memory. Uh, do a similar kind of for loop with, uh, you know, carrying forward the um, pointer to the next and keeping track of them, uh, the tail and the head and all that stuff to have a circular link list in the end. Uh, these are just some utility functions that are called uh, if needed for debugging, print, printing out the list, link list, printing out the header information that's done at startup, getting the heap information. Uh, here's a structure to hold the heap information in a, a member of the code, a uh, global variable. Here's a, uh, the node structure, the circular link list. Um, here's a timer member, which is also global. And here are the, basically the configurable items, the frequency, samples per second, the attenuation, which is a value be between zero and one. Yeah, you don't want to increase that more than one. You don't want to have the voltage um, attempted to be sent out greater than the 3.3 volts that the ESP32 is limited to. So it's a value from one to zero. And then the particular DAC channel, DAC channel one or DAC channel two on this board. And that's about it. So I will post this code on my GitHub and have a link below the video. Um, we want to look at the um, actual performance of this thing um, and the shape of it. So I've got a two kilohertz uh, waveform here. Um, the output is 140,000 samples per second. What I did find is that I can't go above that. Um, or I believe there's either there's either a, an I/O issue beyond that and that it can't keep up. Um, or maybe a processor um, limitation. Um, so if anybody out there has ways or thoughts of uh, improving the uh, performance of this and making it more optimal, and I'm sure there must be ways, um, this whole thing is an exploration for me. I'm very new to um, microcontrollers and so forth. I do have coding experience, but uh, not with uh, working with electronics and microcontrollers. So this is just a fun exploration for me, hoping to meet other people that are also interested in it for the same reason and uh, maybe get some ideas on how to improve this code and make it more efficient. Um, let's change this to, uh, say, uh, 500 hertz. We'll look at a smoother waveform. Build it and uh, upload it to the, uh, to the board. Take just a moment. Oh, here we go. Thanks for your patience.
Here we go, almost done. And there's the new values, 500 hertz, same number of samples per second. Now we've got uh, 280 samples per cycle. Um, and you can see a smoother waveform. Let's uh, have a look at this. So, um, better than uh, PWM, I think. Uh, it'd be great if we could push this to higher frequencies and maybe um, higher uh, sample rates. Um, I'm not sure how to do that, but um, it's a start. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I will post this and um, hopefully get some feedback. Thanks for watching.